Hi everyone, welcome to this Middle Earth Painting Guide video. What I've got for you today is something a little bit more unique. Um, we've actually got the Wild Wild Chieftain. This is part of a, a small commission I've been doing for someone. And this model is a fantastic model and it really does have a lot of character to it. So you've got the Wild here climbing up onto a rock which actually has a dead warrior of Rohan trapped to the rock. So very nice, very cool model. So hopefully people enjoy this. If you do, please leave a like, comment or subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping to do more of these short, sharp painting video guides in the future. So if you like them, please continue to watch. Thanks. So with painting this guy, it's relatively simple. There's a good amount of detail on the model, so you don't really need to worry too much about how effective dry brushes and things look. So first things first, We'll start with the poor guy who's on the rock there. So, talking base colours, I'll be applying Vallejo's Black Grey to the rock as my starting point. That'll also go on the chainmail segments as they're pretty. It's pretty good base for um, a dry brush. I'll probably. I'll also be using that on his boots. So, right at the bottom, past where his um, shin guards are. Whoa! Excuse me. Sorry about that. Then for the trousers and shin guards, I'll be using chocolate brown. And that's a very good color just for giving a base brown color, very basic. I'm also gonna be using that over the warg itself. So the entire warg will get a coat of chocolate brown as that's gonna be my starting point. Then if we turn this around a bit, you can see there's quite a bit of cloak. So for his cloak and some of the other clothing parts, we'll be using extra opaque heavy green a nice green that gives a very very good coverage and for Rohan is absolutely perfect face of the poor guy basic skin tone and his hair I'll be using a bit of the game color earth I'll probably use that on some of the other bits and pieces of his um, uniform as well but that's a good starting point I haven't got any of the reds out, but what I will be doing is painting the inside of the red, inside of his mouth red, um, so that I can start sort of like building up a highlight in there for his mouth. The teeth eventually will just be um, highlighted white, so we'll come to those when we need to. I'll go ahead and apply the washes, and then when we come back, we'll talk a bit more about, no, sorry, I'll apply the base coats, then we'll talk about washes. So the base colors are down on the Wild Wild Chieftain now. And you can see I've not been particularly um, tidy, and that hasn't re doesn't really matter at the moment because next what we're going to be doing is adding the washes. So what we've got we've got the dead guy, and possibly for the um, wag's mouth, I'll be using the game wash flesh wash color. And as I've mentioned previously, it's my go-to wash when I'm painting anything flesh colored. For the chainmail and the boots and the rock, because that's really the only black, black, black bits. Army paint a dark tone. And then for everything else, including the body and fur of the wag itself, we're we'll using Army paint a strong tone. This will just give us a very good base coat before we start dry, dry brushing and applying layers to the fur of the um, beast itself. So I'll cut here and I'll be back shortly once these have been applied, and we'll start to call, talking a bit more about the highlighting stage. So you can see the washes have dried really nicely on this. Um, the fur has taken um, the washes very well because there's a lot of deep recesses. So it looks good actually, I'm quite happy with this one. Um, the dead guy, dried how you'd expect him to. Feeling a bit sorry for himself, but it is what it is. So in terms of colours going forward, <clears throat> Starting with the dead guy, his cloak will get the heavy green, followed by a little bit of game colour earth, and then extreme highlights using Iraqi sand. The sort of like um, shin guards and the membraces he's got on, they were painted with, um, what were they painted with? 
you know what, I can't remember. But I'll highlight them with the um, Earth and Iraqi Sand because I know that it's a combination that works. For the dark leather, we use a very similar process, only it is chocolate brown, followed by earth, followed by I've got to put it. See now a little bit when I followed by Iraqi sand. And the Iraqi sand is just again on the extreme highlight parts. Here's shoes I'll just highlight directly with some London grey and then the metallic parts will just get picked up with gunmetal. If I were doing a hero or a standalone model which had these parts I'd spend a lot more time highlighting them but because it's just a part of the base I won't really be going into it too much. So the wag himself I will paint the teeth with some white and I'll pick out the tongue a bit more um, with some um, with a, a red colour. But there's not really much to do for the mouth. The majority of the focus is going to be actually on the fur. So first step first is I'll go back to the original colour itself. The chocolate brown. And I'll give him a dry brush all over. Now I want to try and get sort of like a variation in the um, areas of fur. So I want the... Um, so like his, the scruff of his neck and this top bit up here to be lighter than the rest of his body. And then, in effect, the bottoms of his legs and his underside, I want that to be darker. So once the dry brush has been applied, I'll probably then try several different layers of dry brushing up from the chocolate brown through earth and then also the... Iraqi sand, and but the Iraqi sand needs to be very, very, very slight, and only probably on the very tips of the fur there, because I want it to look like he's got a big furry coat, but I don't want him to look like he's a Labrador. So quite a quite a tricky um, mix. But if I need, to, if I make any mistakes, I can just go back and apply some more strong tone. The strong tone will not completely reset the process, but it will take me back to a step where actually everything looks like it's. All one and the same like it's meant to be so as with the other videos I've been doing I'll go ahead and I'll do this and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the results so I think I'm getting to the point now where I'm going to call this done um, in the previous video everything had just been blocked in and washed and what I've done since then is I've tried to sort of like pick out some of the areas where there's a contrast and there's a difference in the colors just to try and make this wag stand out a bit. So on sort of like the top of the head here, down the back and down the bottom of the tail, I came in with a grey and actually sort of like I've highlighted this with grey rather than brown, simply to try and get a difference in his coat, the wag's coat. On the areas where he's wounded, which when I painted this model for myself I didn't notice, but I, I did this time. I've gone in with a dark red and then sort of like highlighted the edges with a, a light flesh colour mixed in. And it just makes the wound look a bit more a bit more puckered, a bit more sort of like a fresh fresh wound, especially this one on the face here. Um, I came in, I, I painted, I did that at the same time I did the tongue actually. So I did the tongue, done the teeth, um, highlighted up this poor dude underneath. May need to do a little bit more of a highlight on the stone, but I guess it depends how I how it, I end up basing it. I do need to base it for um, for the guy I'm painting this for, so I'll probably leave that until after it's based. And yeah, I mean, you can even see here just some of the patches where I've painted the wounds. They're quite quite effective. Um, it has only the wag has only got one eye, so I just painted that. I prefer to use yellow for my wag eyes rather than white. I think white makes them look a bit too human. Yellow is a bit more beastly and a bit more feral. So hopefully this has been of use, even if you use this method of painting wags or painting something else with a lot of fur uh, like Bjorn, uh, Bjorn, <laughs> not Bjorn, Bayorn, um, even eagles to an, to an extent, you could use a similar sort of like dry brushing technique. So thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful, um, if you did please like, comment, subscribe, I'm going to be doing more of these and hopefully I'll be able to share that with you soon. So thanks and bye for now.